a minute. What? Where? Where are my? Where have my metal CDs gone? I mean, those are cool Iron Maiden like tins, but where have my CDs gone? Oh, there they are! Wow! Look at all of those beauties. Hello everybody and welcome back to this new video. Today I am finally showing off my metal album CD collection for you. The last time I did this was 2019 and since then I've more than doubled the amount that I own. This isn't even all of them. I have a few more that aren't on this giant pile that's about to topple over but I'm very excited to get into it because there are a lot of new albums that I own and I'm very excited to talk about what albums I love and what albums I love less I guess. I wouldn't buy an album CD if I didn't love the album beforehand so most of what's here I do enjoy so I'm just gonna spend the next however long this video is nerding out about the music I love so with that said I hope you guys enjoy the rest of this video. Alrighty, this is the setup we're going with today. It's the best way for me to show everything all at once and to also go through the albums that I that I love and talk about them a bit better. But you'll see, I had to borrow the space from my DVD shelf. And uh, if you're wondering where my Doctor Who DVDs are, well, it turns out I'm a big fan of Jenga because I'm playing a risky game. Yeah, uh, you, you guys can't see via the video just how precarious that positioning of those DVDs are, so I'm gonna go handheld. Look at this. These could topple at any minute. Anyway, let's talk about metal albums. That's why we're here, isn't it? I've also managed to meticulously arrange these CDs in alphabetical order based on the artist's name. So obviously at the start we'll have stuff like Angel Witch and then at the bottom we'll have stuff like Testament and whatever. So let's go through every single uh, metal album CD that I own. Yay, let's do it. So starting off, as you already saw, is the self-titled Angel Witch album. Now, this is a masterpiece of British New Wave music. I love this album. The actual title track, Angel Witch, is by far the best. I also love Atlantis. Free Man is a good one, Angel of Death, not to get confused with the Slayer version, is also a really, really good track on here as well. I really, really love this album, and the fact that I got a dual case version just means I get more features and more songs. It's just nothing but, but straight bangers on here. You can have a look at the track listings if you want, if you want to pause. Great album, I love it so much. Now we move on to some death metal boys. We have a Monomath, and this is by actually, as it happens, my favorite death metal album of all time, Twilight of the Thunder God. Every single track on here is a belter. At the moment, my favorite song on here is Embrace the Endless Ocean, but Live for the Kill is really good. I love Twilight of Thunder God, Free Will Sacrifice, Guardians of Asgard, everything on here is a brilliant track. There isn't a track I skip on this thing. This is a flawless album, and if there's one death metal album that you can stick on and not skip a single song on, it's this, in my opinion. This is as good as it gets for Amon Um And it was one of the first death metal albums that I ever discovered as well, so there's just a little bit of extra sort of nostalgia and like emotional attachment to this one, so yep, love this one. Next we have Yom's Viking. This one is another really, really good album. My favourite tracks on here are The Wanderer, On a Sea of Blood, One Against All. Raise Your Horns is a, is a classic, obviously. Way of the Vikings is also really good. This album is another solid one that I really love. And then their latest album, Berserker. This one is obviously a brilliant one as well. Probably my second favorite Amon Amarth album, now that I think about it. I think every song on here is great. Fafner's Gold is a one that I've recently just really loved. Milner is a really good song. Shield Wall, Valkyrie, Raven's Flight, Ironside. Skull and Hattie, Wings of Eagles is really good. Into the Dark is a really good closer, actually. This is a really solid Solid album as well. If you're looking for modern and monomath, this is where it's at. This is a really, really good album here. Next, we move on to uh, Anthrax, actually. A really, really good thrash band. We have uh, Spreading the Disease, which is a really good album. Um, the first album that I heard of uh, Anthrax as well. It's just a really, really good album as well. I won't go through every single song that I love in each album. I want to try and go a bit faster through this, but I love Gung Ho, Lone Justice, Madhouse, Armed and Dangerous. There are a lot of good tracks on here, so any of the above there I'd recommend listening to. And Among the Living, my favourite Anthrax album. Everything on here is great. I love every single one of them. Among the Living, Caught in the Marsh, I Am the Law, Skeleton in the Closet, One World. Just, this whole album is flawless. Go listen to it. Love it. Speaking of loving it, I'm going to move on to my favourite band of all time. This might surprise you, or it might not, depending on how uh, long you've been following this channel. We have Avenged Sevenfold with their first ever EP, Warmness on the Soul. Now, this is... 
obviously good to have. It's more of a collector's piece than anything else, but I do enjoy listening to this from time to time if I'm feeling nostalgic or if I'm feeling like listening to a few tracks but not all of Seventh Trumpet, I go to this sometimes. Uh, though the heavy, met heavy, <laughs> heavy metal version of When the Rapture is a bit anticlimactic listening to it, it's still a good track. I love Darkness Surrounding. This version is way better than the one that's on the actual Seventh Trumpet album. Um, it's a nice EP. It's fun. I'm glad that I have it, definitely. And the logo looks so interesting for the band logo. It looks so cool on the CD. Anyway, right, and the album art itself. Anyway, I'll shut up now. Then we have Seventh Trumpet, a solid metalcore album. I really enjoy going back to this one. Uh, art of Subconscious Illusion is my favorite track on here, but I also love Lips of Deceit, Streets, Warmness on the Soul, and Shattered by Broken Dreams. Those would be my favorite from, favorites from this album, but I do enjoy every song by this band and by extension this album, so there you go. Waking the Fallen. This is just the original version of Waking the Fallen. Favorite tracks on here. Unholy Confessions, Chapter Four, Desecrate for Reverence, Second Heartbeat is what I meant to say. We Won't See You Tonight, Part One, and Clairvoyant Disease happens to be one of my favorite Avenged Sevenfold uh, songs of all time. So there you go. Now, we also have this really tatty looking Waking the Fallen Resurrected Edition, uh, released a lot later. There's an ex-library copy. Uh, there's a whole story about how I ended up getting my hands on this. It's a very, very tatty thing, but I only really got this for the demos, to be honest, because the demos are surprisingly really, really good, especially the second heartbeat demo. Um, I really do enjoy that. And the resurrected version of the Waking the Fallen track is also excellent. Um, so, like I say, I only got this for the for the uh, demos. I don't really get it for the for the cover and the packaging because obviously it looks tatty as hell. Oh no! Right, that's it for that one. Next, City of Evil, another good album. My favourite tracks on here are as follows: Strength of the World, Beast in the Harlot, Blinded in Chains, M.I.A. and Seize the Day. Those would be my favourites on this album. Next we have Avengers Unfold self-titled. I think every song on here I love, but I'd say my absolute favorites on here are Little Piece of Heaven, Dear God, Afterlife, Scream, and Brompton Cocktail. Those would be my favorites, but I do love Critical Acclaim as well. Next we have Diamonds in the Rough, the 2010 version uh, that was released as like a B-Sides uh, compilation. Every song on here is a banger as per usual. Oddly enough, hot take, I prefer this album's version of Almost Easy over the actual version of Almost Easy in their self-titled album. Not many people will have that opinion, but I do, and it usually shocks people when I tell them that. But the songs I especially love on this album are Demons, Crossroads, Until the End, Tension, Dancing Dead, and then on the B-sides of this album that was released into Le Pile Le Pouchard, I can't fucking speak English today, the 2020 version of Diamonds in the Rough, my favourites on that will be St. James, Set Me Free, and 4AM. But I do love all of Diamonds in the Rough, so I can pick and choose which ones I want to listen to, and I'll love them all equally, pretty much. Nightmare, another amazing album. My favourites are as follows. Save Me, So Far Away, Victim, Buried Alive, Welcome to the Family, Nightmare. This whole album's good, to be honest. I don't know why I'm saying that. Same with this. I love Hail to the King. This is probably one of my favourite Avengers Unfold albums. That's another hot take, I think. Not many people have share that opinion, but I do. Every single track on here is a banger, if you ask me. My absolute favourites I've had to pick. Hail to the King, Heretic, Acid Rain, Crimson Day and coming home. Those would be my absolute favorites, but every single track on here is amazing. So take that as you will. And then their latest album from 2016. We've still yet to get a new album from them, by the way. It's fucking six years and we haven't got a new one. Come on, Avengers Unfold, what are you doing? We have the stage. Um, I don't have the deluxe version, but one day I'll get it because I think the B-sides on the stage are stronger than the A-sides, if you ask me, even though they are mostly covers on the B-side. I still prefer the B-side to the A-side. But some of my favourites on the stage is the, uh, the title track, Sunny Disposition is quite fun, Roman Sky I adore, Exist, Goddamn, those are probably my favourites. And then on the B-sides, probably Retro Vertigo and As Tears Go By, uh, and As God Only Knows as well as a good one, and Dose, Dose is okay. Uh, I'll try to go a bit faster through the rest of these, I think, but we have the ultimate collection of Black Sabbath, which is basically just all of their greatest hits put into one big thing. So like Paranoid, Sweet Leaf, Rat Salad, Children of the Grave, Iron Man, you get the idea. This has just got like their, their greatest hits on here. Uh, next we have a really, really cool thing that I have here. 
This is the Dio five album collection thingy majigger. This has five of their greatest albums all in one big package. So the ones we have, Last in Line, Dream Evil, Holy Diver, Sacred Heart, and Lock Up the Wolves. The, this, these are some great albums here. And it actually so happens that Holy Diver is one of my favorite albums of all time. So I obviously revisit this pack all the time just for Holy Diver here. But I do listen to the others as well. Last in Line is a very good album as well. And I love, I love I love Dream Evil as an album. It has Night People on there, which happens to be my favourite Dio song of all time. So there you go. This is a great collector's piece, though. Five albums in one. I think I got it for like 15, 20 pounds maybe as well for five albums. That is not a complaint. That is excellent price for five albums. So I also really like Wild One on Lock Up the Wall. But that's a solid song as well. But no, this is a great collector's piece. I love this thing to pieces. I always go back to this for Holy Diver alone. But yeah, anyway. Next, we move on to Disturbed with The Sickness. Probably Disturbed's best album, objectively speaking. Not my personal favorite, but it is an amazing album. And it has so many good songs that gave them their first burst of fame. So Down With The Sickness, Stupefy, Voices, The Game, Conflict, I really like. Dropping Plates is really cool. Shout is a good cover as well. There are just some really solid tracks on here. I'd highly recommend this one. But one that I would not recommend is Believe. I feel like this album is massively overhyped and extremely overrated, if you ask me. This album, I have no love for. This album is one that has so many forgettable songs on here that I don't really care about. The only ones I ever go back to and listen on the, this album is Prayer, Liberate, and then Believe, maybe. And that's kind of it. The rest of the out, the rest of the songs on here, I just do not care for that much. So, yeah, sorry if you like this album, but I'm not the biggest fan of it, to be honest. It's just kind of boring and forgettable. This one, on the other hand, is an excellent album. I love this one. This one is actually brilliant. Let's go through some of the tracks that I love. 10,000 Fists, Just Stop, Guarded, Defy, I'm Alive, Sons of Plunder, Overburdened, Land of Confusion, Sacred Lie, Pain Redefined. There are just so many good songs on here that I just always go back to and listen to. This album has some of my favourite Aven uh, Disturbed songs of all time. And uh, God, the album cover is kind of striking as well, don't you think? I really like it. Next we have Indestructible, uh, a good album. I like it. The album cover is very iconic, I will say that, because it has the guy. Indestructible is probably their best song on here, but I also do like Inside the Fire. Perfect Insanity is good. Haunted I really enjoy. Divide is okay. The Night I actually is quite a really it's quite an interesting one as well. I think it's just a, another solid album from them, so yeah, this is a good one. Uh, next we have Asylum, which is kind of a poo-poo album. I'm not the biggest fan of this one. Besides the title track and maybe Animal, those are the only ones that I go back to and listen to on this album. Maybe Another Way to Die, maybe The Warrior. But besides that, it's just a lot of middle-of-the-road uh, songs that I don't often find myself wanting to go back to and listening to. Like I said, besides the title track and The Animal. Um, but yeah, that's that was uh, Asylum. Then we have their compilation album, The Lost Children, which has a bunch of, I think they were B-sides that they just uh, were cut from their albums and they were stuck on here. This one is another middle of the road album. I don't find myself going back to this one and listening to it too much. I do enjoy Midlife Crisis and this moment is quite good. Hell is a really good opener. And the cover of Mid Living After Midnight is quite good, even though it has the painkiller drum solo at the start. Parasite is okay. Two Worlds yeah, is alright, and then Leave It Alone is alright. The rest of it is just kind of forgettable, considering there are 16 tracks on here. It does feel like kind of a snooze fest when you listen to it through. So, yeah. Uh, it's okay. Nothing more than that, though. Alright. Next, we have the first album I heard of Disturbed, Immortalized. When it came out in 2015, this album has so much nostalgia for me. There are, every single track on here is a banger, if you ask me. I can't really pick my favourite. I guess I will. Vengeful One is amazing. Who Taught You How to Hate is amazing. Oddly enough, it doesn't have the bonus tracks on it that I really enjoy as well. Brave and the Bold and Legion of Monsters are two amazing tracks that I wish was on this CD. Never Wrong is good. Sound of Silence is emotional. Your Mind is also really experimental and cool. Immortalize is a good track. It's just a really, really good album, and I always love going back to this one. But yeah, that was uh, Immortalized. Love it. All right, next we move on to Dream Theatre. I'm a big prog metal guy, so these these this band is kind of my bread and butter. I love 
Dream Theatre, and by extension, Awake is a really, really good track that is still in its uh, shrink wrap for some reason. But no, here are the track listings here. You want to read them? There are some really good tracks on here that I love. Caught in a Web is amazing. Lie is good. Voices is really good. Lifting Shadows Off a Dream is amazing. The Mirror, oh my god, what a good song. This is a really, really good album. And then we have my favourite Dream Theatre album, Images and Words. Massively, massively underappreciated album, this one. Every single song on here is a belter. I love every single one of these. Pull Me Under is amazing. Another Day is emotional. Take the Time is experimental. Surrounded is good. Metropolis is so good, so experimental. Under a Glass Moon is badass. Wait for Sleep is good. And Learning to Live is a brilliant closer. I love this album, so good. I highly recommend if you're into prog metal, listen to this album. It's so good and it's so early in the band's career as well. It's crazy they come out with such a banger. Anyway, then we have Octavarium. I think that's how you pronounce the word. There are some good tracks on this one too. The Root of All Evil is probably my favorite on here, but I do love Panic Attack. I Walk Beside You is really good. Title track is okay. This is just a really solid album once again. I really like this one. And then last but not least, Systematic Chaos. This is another excellent one. Forsaken is by far, bar none, my favorite on the album. I also love Constant Motion. Repentance is good. Prophets of War is actually really good as well. Both parts of Presence of Enemies is really, really good as well. So just another brilliant album by Dream Theatre. So there you go. Next we have a metalcore band, Escape the Fate. This is probably my favourite album of theirs. I haven't listened to them in a long time though. This band is like part of my pre-teen sort of like music tastes as it were, where I was like into the edgy music. Yeah, edgy music. Which is the same era where I got into Avenged Sevenfold, but they stuck whereas Escape the Fate didn't, I'm afraid. But this is still an amazing album. I still remember really enjoying a lot of these songs here. Live Fast, Die Beautiful is really good. Forget About Me is excellent. I remember really, really liking that one. One for the Money is a brilliant one. And then Father and Brother, I remember really enjoying the ending to the album, so. Yeah, another solid album here. So there you go. If you're ever into metalcore and you want to try out something new. Yeah, try on, try on uh, Ungrateful. This is a really good album. There you go. Now we move on to my gargantuan uh, Iron Maiden collection here. Starting with their self-titled. No, starting with the Killers. Hold on. Why are these in the wrong order? God damn it, Zach. You had one job. All right. Starting with their self-titled. Um, this has some of my favourite tracks from the whole band on here. Prowler fucking beautiful. I think there are a lot of really, really good songs on this album, and the self-title is really underappreciated for that reason. Sanctuary is really cool. Transylvania is really good. Charlotte the Harlot is catchy. They're, obviously, their title track, Iron Maiden, is actually really cool. Running Free, so nostalgic for me. I love Running Free. I think Prowler still remains my favourite track on the album, though, but this whole album is really good, and people don't appreciate this one enough. All right, now we have Killers. In my opinion, a slightly overrated album, but overrated doesn't mean bad, by the way. There are still some great tracks on here. Wrath Child is probably my favourite on the album. Another Life is quite good. Killers is quite good. Prodigal Son is really good. Purgatory is alright. Besides that, I think the rest of the tracks on here fall a bit flat, in my opinion. They're not bad, but they're just a bit forgettable compared to the rest of the tracks on here. But, uh, yeah. Next, we have one of their best albums, Number of the Beast. Remains to be one of my favourites from the whole band. Every track on here is brilliant. Invaders is amazing. Children of the Dam used to be one of my least favourite Iron Maiden songs. Has quickly risen up to being one of my favourites in the last year. Crazy. Children of the Damned is so good now and I can't believe I ever hated on it. The Prisoner is classic. Acacia Avenue is catchy. Really cool. Always loved that one. Number of the Beast, obviously, and Run to the Hills, obviously. Gangland is good. Total Eclipse is underrated and Hallowed Be Thy Name is a good closer. This is a really, really good album, guys, and everyone probably already knows it, but there you go, just thought I'd reiterate. Next, we have Peace of Mind. Uh, yep, yeah, another really, really good album that's apparently still in its shrink wrap for some reason. Where Eagles Dare, Revelations, Fight of Icarus, Dive Your Boots on Trooper, and To Tame the Land are probably my favourite on here, but Sun and Steel is another solid one. So solid, in fact, that they named a beer after it, so there you go, goes to show. Then we have another one of Iron Maiden's best albums of all time, 
Power Slave. This one has very much been opened and used a lot over the years. I love Power Slave. Every single song on here is a banger. Ace is High, Two Minutes to Midnight. Lucifer's Words is probably the weakest on the album, but I still love it. The Do Let is another good one. And Flash of the Blade was one of the first Iron Maiden songs I ever heard. Back in the Village is really catchy and cool. Power Slave is so experimental and cool. And then Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner is a brilliant experimental closer that I always love. Always love this one. And then we have one of my other favourite Iron Maiden albums of all time, Somewhere in Time. And I'll tell you, the reason why this is still shrink-wrapped is because I only received it this Christmas, which is crazy that it took me this long to finally receive it. But I finally have one of their best albums, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, I, this whole album is flawless. Um, I'm just going to go through it. Caught Somewhere in Time, Wasted Year, Sea of Madness, Heaven Can't Wait, Loneliness of John Long... <laughs> loneliness of a Long Distance Runner, I repeat. Stranger in a Strange Land, Deja Vu, Remember... Oh, no, Alexander the Great, never mind. And then that's it. So many good tracks on here. I love this album. My favourite is probably Caught Somewhere in Time, but Wasted Years is a close second because of the meaning behind it. Um, I also really do like Deja Vu, and Stranger in a Strange Land is excellent as well. See, your Madness is good. The whole album's good. Why am I just reiterating that? It's such a good album. Go listen to it. All right, Seventh Son of the Seventh Son is good. I like this one. This one is a decent one. It's a bit of a step down from <laughs> Somewhere in Time, but whatever. What can you do? Moonchild is probably my favourite on here. Can I play with Madness? I used to not enjoy because I found it repetitive, but now I'm like, ah, it's all right. Actually, no, Evil That Men Do, that's my favourite song on here. It's so cool. This meaning behind it is also really, really uh, cool as well. The Prophecy is okay. The Clairvoyant, I'm not the biggest fan of. And the, and the title track is a bit meh. But it's still a decent album. There isn't really an Iron Maiden album that I, that I hate. There are just some that I like less than others. And I can... Seventh Son is probably one of my least favourites of the band, but I still enjoy it, which is why I own it. Anyway, right, this album is fucking godly. People don't appreciate No Prayer for the Dying as much as they should. There are so many good ones in here. Tail Gunner is catchy as hell. Holy Smoke is really, really good. No Prayer for the Dying is such an emotional song. It's probably my favorite Iron Maiden song of all time at this point. Either that or maybe something from Fear of the Dark. Fate's Warning is really good. Hooks in You is really cool. Bring a Door to the Slaughter. Yeah, I know that one is a, catchy and repetitive, but I really enjoy it. And then Mother Russia is a cool closer. There are a lot of really good songs on here that people don't appreciate. And then we move on to Fear of the Dark. For some reason, it's not liked because there's this stigma that you can't enjoy 90s Iron Maiden. That you can't enjoy the 90s albums, which is why people also don't like No Prayer for the Dying when they really should. But uh, no, no uh, or Fear of the Dark rather, this album is also not very much loved, which really upsets me because this one is probably my favorite of the whole band, if not my second favorite. There are so many good songs on here that I love. I, I love and quit. The, what, the, oh, can I just speak English for one minute, please? Be Quick or Be Dead is amazing. From Here to Eternity is really cool. Afraid to Suit Strangers is probably one of my favorites of the whole band, definitely in the top five. Fear is the Key is really good. I don't know why people don't like that song. Childhood End is cool. Wasting Love is a cool ballad. The Future Tip is so good. And people don't talk about that song enough. Chains of Misery is good. The Apparition is alright. Judas Be My Guide is amazing. Weekend Warrior is really cool. It's really emotional and really just nostalgic to listen to that one. And then Fear of the Dark. Amazing song in an amazing album. And uh, there you go. That's uh, no f uh, Fear of the Dark. Great album. Great album. And the oh, can, can we just appreciate the cover art? I mean, every Iron Maiden album cover is really good, but this one, it's so sick, isn't it? People don't talk about Tree Eddie enough. Anyway, next we have... Uh, what is it next? Oh, yeah, Brave New World. We skipped the, uh, the X Factor and Virtual XI because uh, I'm not the biggest fan of those albums. I don't hate them. In fact, I've come to quite enjoy The X Factor in recent years, um, but I just don't have them on, D on CD yet, but I will at some point, because I do enjoy them. Uh, I enjoy certain tracks on them at least. But no, Brave New World, amazing album. This is an album I really did overlook back in the day, but now, after doing my marathon of listening to every single album of Iron Maiden leading up to Zenjitsu last year, I re-listened to this and I realized that this is a top five album from the whole band and I was stupid to think otherwise. Ghost in the Navigator is such an underrated song. Obviously, The Wicker Man needs no introduction. Brave New World is really good. Blood Brothers is one of the best ballads in all of metal, and I don't like how people just overlook it. The Mercenary is really good. Dream of Mirrors is all right. The Fallen Angel is a secret gem in the album. The Nomad is all right. Silent Planet 
It's really good. Thin line between love and hate is an all right closer. Not the best closer of an Iron Maiden now, but it's all right. Um, great album though, great album all around. And an album that I've always loved and will always defend. Oh, come on, don't do this to me. Also, this isn't the rest of the albums. The rest of them are down there. We'll talk about those in a second. Let's finish Iron Maiden. Dance of Death. I love this one. I don't love the album art. As you know, you know what? I do. It's funny as fuck, but not for the right reasons. I don't like this album art for the right reasons. It's kind of stupid. It feels like they had too much fun in digital modeling when they were making this one. It just looks very odd, but in a funny way to me. I find it kind of amusing, but if you, it's hard to take this album seriously with an album cover like this. But I love this album. There isn't a single track that I dislike on here. This is a no skip album for me. There aren't many of those in Iron Maiden. The only ones that probably contend with this are Number of the Beast, Somewhere in Time, and Fear of the Dark. And then maybe they're self-titled at the start of their career. But this one is a brilliant one all the same. Wildest Dreams is a really cool opener. Rainmaker, so fucking good. I swear to God, no one appreciates that song. No More Lies is brilliant. Dance of Death I really like. Gates of Tomorrow has a really cool guitar riff at the start. Passchendaele, New Frontier, Face in the Sand, Age of Eight Innocence is really good. All of every song on here is really good. I, I don't know why I keep repeating myself, but this album needs more praise than it gets. It's just a shame the album art lets it down. <laughs> anyway, right, moving on to their 2016 album, Book of Souls. Come on, Zenjitsu, we've been over this. Stay up there. You're next, okay? Book of Souls is a great album. Um, obviously, it, it isn't perfect, and there are some tracks on here that I definitely do skip, and it's a long one as well. It's like they're trying to do a rock opera here. And uh, it's still good. I, I quite like it. I definitely love Eternity Should Fail. Empire of the Clouds is quite good. The title track is okay. Death or Glory is quite good. One that I, obviously Speed of Light, everyone loves Speed of Light. But one that no one talks about is when the river, river runs deep. That one is one that I feel like people don't talk about enough. Um, I really like that one. It's very catchy and cool. And then Tears of a Clown is emotional for obvious reasons. Um, but no, a great album. And now, on to their latest one from 2021, Zenjitsu. I really like this one. People, when it came out, everyone was raving about it and saying that it was good. And then when people started saying, that, oh, there are some tracks that aren't that good, people just started jumping on that bandwagon and saying that it's kind of a middle of the road album. But I think it's great. I love Zenjitsu. There are so many tracks on here that I love mostly from the first half of the album. I love Zenjitsu and Stratago. Those two songs are brilliant. Writing on the Wall, I don't need to say any more about that. Lost in a Lost World is amazing. Days of Future Past is excellent. Time Machine, I could take it or leave it. Darkest Hour, emotional as hell. Death of the Celts is really good. Pasha, uh, the Parchment is okay, and then Hell on Earth is an amazing end to the album. I cannot stress that enough. A great album all around, to be honest. I love Zenjitsu. People don't talk about it enough. It just came out and everyone was like, oh, it's good or whatever. And then they were like, all right, I'm bored now. And then they just move on. It's kind of sad. People didn't, this album deserved a bit more love. Anyway, moving down to the next row into, into Iron Savior, which I have two albums of now. First of all, we have Dark Assault, a really good album. I think I got this from Joe a few years back, but it's a really, really good uh, album. Seek and Destroy cover is quite good. Up Into Hell is all right. Predators I really like, and then their cover of Delivering the Goods is quite good. After the War is probably the best on the album though, but a good album all around. I love Dark Assault. Then we have my favorite album of theirs, The Landing. There are so many good songs on here. There is zero skip in this whole thing. The Savior is brilliant, Starlight is brilliant, March of Doom, Heavy Metal Never Dies, Moment in Time, Hall of the Heroes, Are You Ready, Faster Than All, Before the Pain, and then No Guts, No Glory is a great closer. There are so many good tracks on here that, oh God, if you love power metal, this is where you need to go. This album is where you need to go. You need to check this one out immediately. Next, we have my Judas Priest CDs. So we're starting with, obviously, Killing Machine here. My favorite songs on here are Delivering the Goods, Hellbent for Leather, Green Man Unleash You with a Two-Pronged Crown, Killing Machine, Running Wild, and that's about it. But I don't mind Evil Fantasies. That's quite a good one. And then they have a Riding on the Wind song in there as well. So, you know, some good songs in there. Then we have, obviously, British Steel, one of the band's best songs, or albums even, of all time. This album is just flawless, in my opinion. Rapid Fire is amazing. Metal Gods needs no introduction. Breaking the Law, Grinder, United. You Don't Have to Be Old to Be Wise is probably my favorite Judas Priest song. Living After Midnight, The Rage, and Stealer. There are so many good ones here. Red, White, and Blue is also a decent bonus track on here. Really, really good album. I love that one. Then we have Screaming for Vengeance. Uh, 
I mostly love Electric Eye on here and that's it, but I do love Screaming for Vengeance and you've got another thing coming. Those are probably my favourites. Actually no, Riding on the Wind is okay, I quite like that one too. Then we have uh, Turbo. I'm probably the only motherfucker in the world that actually likes Turbo. Everyone else who talks about Judas Priest goes, oh most of their albums are good except Turbo. And I'm just like, what's wrong with Turbo? There are so many good tracks on here. I think it's because they didn't like how they went glam metal, I guess. It's a sh shame that people don't, can't overlook that and see how many good songs are in here. Turbo Lover is amazing. Locked In, I love. Private Property is good. Parental Guidance, so I could take it or leave it. Rocking Around the World is amazing. Out in the Cold is quite good. Wild Nights is okay. Hot For Love is brilliant and Reckless is also so catchy and cool. If there's anybody out there in this world that also likes Turbo, God bless you, because we are Diamond Dozen. Apparently, like, no one loves Turbo. It's a shame how, how little people like this album. Anyway, last but not least, Painkiller. Probably Judas Priest's best album. Yeah, this is a flawless album. There are so many tracks on here that I love. My favorite is probably Nightcrawler, but I do love the title track. Hell Patrol, All Guns Blazing, Leather Rebel. Metal Meltdown, I forgot about that one. And then Between the Hammer and the Anvil is quite good. Oh yeah, and then Touch of Evil. That's right, that's a really good one. I forgot I forgot that Touch of Evil was on here, you know? Yeah, no, a really good album that is. But yeah, moving out of Judas Priest and into Lamb of God, we have their only album in my collection, which is probably their best. Though I do love their latest album, Memento Mori. This is Ashes of the Wake. I really like this one. My favorite on here is probably Laid to Rest, but I do also like One Gun. Blood of the Scribe is quite good. Remorse is for the Dead is a, quite a cool closer, to be honest. This is quite a decent album. If you're into Lamb of God, I can't see why you wouldn't like this album. Next we have Manowar, with only two albums that I own here. This is probably one of my favourites. Um, Battle Hymn doesn't get talked about enough when we're talking about the best Manowar albums. This isn't really in the conversation that much, but I feel like Battle Hymns deserves a bit more praise. I think every song on here is good. The only one I skip is William's Tale, but it's William's Tale, so I don't think anybody can blame me for that. I love Shell Shock. I love Metal Days. Dark Avenger, classic. The obviously Man of War, the song, brilliant. I love it. Fast Taker, Death No, Death Death Note, Death Tone rather, amazing. Battle Hymn is such a good closer. My God, this album's good. Why do people not like this one, man? Or if they do, why don't they love it the most? This is such a good one. This needs to be appreciated more, I feel. Then we have their uh, Thunder in the Sky EP, which I love. I love this thing. If it was a full album, this would be my favorite album by Manowar, but considering it's just an EP, you know, it can't be in the conversation for the best of the best, I'm afraid. I think my favorites on here are Let the Gods Decide, God or Man, and Thunder in the Sky, but I do love Father. Father is a really, really good one. Um, it's really emotional. And the cover of Crown on the Ring on here is probably my, my preferred version. Uh, the other version is good, but I think the version on here is just a tad better in my opinion. I don't know why, I just, I just guess I'd prefer it, I don't know. All right, M uh, Metallica next. I don't have Kill 'Em All, which is crazy. <laughs> why do I not have Kill 'Em All? I've loved that album for so many years and I still don't have it as a CD. That's kind of mad. I only just realized how, how ridiculous that sounds. Nonetheless, we have Ride the Lightning, probably my favorite album by the band, if not my second favorite. It's really good. There are so many good tracks on here. Fight Fire with Fire, Ride the Lightning, Fume the Bell Tolls, Fade to Black, Trapped Under Ice, Escape. I'm just naming all of the tracks on here. There are just so many good ones, all right? Just go listen to it. I'm sure you already have, if you're a Metal fan or Metallica fan. Here, listen to it again. How about that? Also, the cover is really iconic. The electric chair, it's just a really, really cool artwork. I don't know, I like it. Then, we have the Black Album. Uh, this one's good. Uh, not as good as people say, but I still enjoy it. Um, I think, I think the hype behind it has kind of pushed it down in my list of favorites, I think, but I still enjoy it. I think my favorites are, obviously, and Sandman is good. Sad But True is all right. Besides that, I quite enjoy Wolf of Man. Wolf and Man, sorry. Nothing Else Matters is cool. Struggle Within is okay. There were just a lot of middle of the road albums, uh, songs in this album. Um, but I still enjoy the album as a whole, I guess. It's still a good one. I, just, it, I don't think it deserves all the hype that it gets, but it's still okay. Next, we have, if not my favorite, then one of my favorite Metallica albums, And Justice For All. Yes, I know the bass is gone from this album. I've already been told this 1,000 times. I still enjoy it. There are so many good tracks on here that I go back to and listen to to this day. I think my favorite track is Dear's Eve. 
but I also really love one, Eye of the Beholder, Blackened, and Justice for All. Freyed Ends of Sanity is really good. Harvester of Sorrow. There are just so many good tracks on here that I really enjoy. So uh, if you don't like it, bite me. Anyway, uh, then we have Death Magnetic, an even more controversial album. Um, it's so loud. <laughs> <laughs> but besides that, it's a really good one. I really enjoy this one. There are so many good tracks on here. I think my favourite is Cyanide, but I also really like Nightmare Long. That Was Just Your Life is really good. The End of the Line is quite good as well. The Day That Never Comes is quite a good ballad, isn't it? Overall, this is a really underrated album, and people that don't like it haven't really given it a proper try, I think. Anyway, that's the end of Metallica for now. Um, next time you get a fucking metal scene collection in like 2026 or something i'll probably have kill them all by then but until that day you'll just have to live without it then the motorhead greatest hits uh, best of rather uh this is much like the black sabbath greatest hits i showed you earlier it just has their best songs iron fist ace of spades overkill bomber no class you get the idea there were just loads of loads of the of loads of the band's best tracks all in one big CD, which is why I had to get it, to be honest, because who doesn't love Motorhead, am I right? All right, next up, we have my only Nightwish CD, Over the Hills and Far Away. This has some good tracks on it as well. Wishmaster is really good. I love Tenth Man Down. Kingslayer is really good. She Is My Sin is quite good. Over the Hills and Far Away is a good track as well. There were just some good songs on here. But yeah, that's it. Nightwish. I do like Nightwish. I think they're really, really good symphonic metal. Um, I do. I do have a soft spot for them. All right. Next, we have Overkill with a Horoscope. This is an interesting cover art of Horoscope. This isn't the one that you're used to, but it's still the album. Coma is a really good one. Infectious is really good. Blood Money, I really like. Thanks for Nothing. It's really good. Frankenstein is solid as well. This is just a really solid album. And then the other one that I have of Overkill is Ironbound. Amazing. Considering this is so late in their career as well, it's mad that they came out of such a banger. Ironbound is amazing. Bring Me the Night is so good. Such a headbanger. Endless War is good. In Vain is a really solid one. The Goal is Your Soul is really good. Um, but yeah, just a, a really, really good album. Unfortunately, I still don't have Years of Decay, which is mad because that's one of my favorite thrash albums of all time, and I still don't have Years of Decay. I, I need to have it. I need to get it. I will have it soon. I promise. I put it on like every Christmas list. It's three years running now, and I still haven't got it. Maybe next year. Fingers crossed. Either that or I'll just buy it from HMV or something for like an extortionate price. But until then, I don't have Years of Decay. Right, on to we have Pantera, Cowboys from Hell. One of, if not mm, the best, pa Pantera albums. I love it to pieces. It's one of the first metal albums I ever sat through and listened to back in the day. This album I heard back in 2010, I'm pretty sure. Either that or 2011, I think. It was this and the second one, Vulgar Display of Power. It was these two albums I listened to back to front together back in 2011, I'm pretty sure, where I listened to songs like Cowboys from Hell, Primal Concrete Sledge, Psycho Holiday, Heresy is a recent one that I've liked, but then Cemetery Gates, Domination, Art of Shredding, and then on the second album, the other nostalgic songs that I still love today are Mouth of War, New Level, Walk, Fucking Hostile, Rise, The Hollow is really good, by the way. I love Hollow. It's such an, I love, you know what I love? And this is something you've probably noticed. I love albums that end with a ballad. I think that's the best way to end an album because you go through all of that chaos of all these really hostile songs, like Mouth of War, fucking hostile, or yeah. And then you end the album with a ballad, Hollow. It's just so cool because you can reflect on the madness you just listened to. I love albums that end on ballads and I wish that more did that. But that, that's, that's obviously a, a, one of the reasons why I love uh, Vulgar Display of Power so much. But onto the third album, Art Beyond, Fa Art? <laughs> Far Beyond Driven is what I meant to say. Another good al good album. This is considered another one of their best albums. It's not my personal favorite, but it is still really, really good. Some of my favorite ones are Shedding Skin, Planet Caravan cover is really good. I'm Broken, I love. Five Minutes Alone is awesome. Strength Beyond Strength is quite good and Slaughtered I remember liking quite a lot. Um, another really, really good album here. Um, I, I've always been a fan of Pantera, but those are my three favorite albums in that order as well. Uh, then after that, probably Reinventing the Steel. It's probably my next favorite. Um, but there we go. Uh, next we have a compilation album, Best of Pantera, Reinventing Hell. Uh, this just has all of this stuff. 
This just has a, a live performance here, a bonus DVD of that, and then it also has some of their best tracks on this side. So Cowboys from Hell all the way down to the badge. This is just a really, really good piece. I love that I've got this because it is, it's got a lot of cool stuff on here and the DVD is awesome as well. Um, but yeah, that's Pantera. Next we move on to my only Primal Fear album. I do want to get more. I want to get Rule Breaker. I want to get 166 um, and their latest one. I've forgotten what it's called. Metal Commando or Metal Commander. I'm not sure. But this is still my favorite Primal Fear album. I really enjoy this one. It has some of my favorite tracks on here. We have uh, New Rise, Ritual, King of Madness is amazing. Blood, Sweat and Fear is amazing. Hail to the Fear is also really good. Hounds of Justice is heavy as fuck. The Beast is quite good. Cannonball I, or, I quite like. Uh, it's just a really, really good album. I really, really love this one. Apocalypse. Definitely recommend this one. This is really good power metal, this. Speaking of power metal, we have uh, Sabaton. Uh, surprisingly, surprising how much I love Sabaton. I don't have enough Sabaton albums. I only have two of them. E obviously my two favorites of them, but I definitely need to collect more of them. I need Carolus Rex. I need Metalizer. I need Heroes. I need Last Stand. I need all of these albums, but all in good time, I guess. But um, yep, yeah. so first of all, we have Primo Victoria. Amazing album, a classic, easily. I love this thing so much. My favorite tracks are as follows. The title track is amazing. Panzer Battalion is amazing. Metal Machine is amazing. Into the Fire is great. Stalingrad, Counter Strike, Wolfpack, Shogun. Not Shogun, Shotgun. I've been listening to my Trivium. Yeah, Shotgun is good. Reign of Terror is all right. It's just a really good album. Really good album. Love Primo Victoria. And then my favorite Sabaton album, The Great War amazing there are no skip in this whole thing even flanders field at the end is a really emotional end that i really enjoy listening to after all of these other great album uh, songs on this album just look at the track listings every single song on there you see all those names there future warfare down to uh end of the war to end of wars every song on here is amazing even devil dogs ghost in the trenches amazing I love every single one on here. Seven Pillars of Wisdom, 80 Second All The Way, you name it. Love every single one of the songs on here. Brilliant stuff. All right, now, on to Thrash. We have some more Thrash stuff here. So we have Sepultura, Beneath The Remains. A great album. I love this one. Um, Chaos AD, I need to get, but I haven't got yet. Um, this is probably my favorite Sepultura album, though. Slaves of Pain is amazing. The title track is really good. Inner Self is really good. Lobotomy is really good. Mass Hysteria is really good. Stronger Than Hate is really good. This album's just really good. <laughs> Go figure. Um, then we move on to Slayer. Slayer! I love Slayer. Always have, always will. Come on, camera, behave. Let's move. Awesome. Rain and Blood. Amazing album. Amazing album. Probably my favourite of the whole band, if not the next one. Um, I love this album. It's so good. Angel of Death, Piece by Piece, Necro Necrophobic. Sorry, that's always a mouthful for me to uh, read off. Rain and Blood, Postmortem, Epidemic. There are so many good songs on this album that I just always enjoy listening to. So, so sick. Next one, South of Heaven. If Rain and Blood wasn't my favorite uh, Slayer album, then this is definitely it. South of Heaven just has everything that Slayer, uh, that uh, Rain and Blood was, except a bit more. This has so many good songs on here. Silent Scream is amazing. Living Undead is amazing. South of Heaven is really good. This is an aggressor cover is also really cool. Cleanse the Soul is really good. Ghosts of War, love it. Mandatory Suicide, Spill the Blood is really good. This is just an amazing album. I highly recommend this one. This one goes under the radar when we're talking about the best Slayer albums. This one never enters the conversation when it it clearly should. Great album all around, love it. Last but definitely not least, Seasons in the Abyss. Um, probably my third or fourth favourite Slayer album. The only one that might rival it is um, God Ace Us All. Um, besides that, this is amazing. War Ensemble is great. Spirit in Black is great. Dead Skin Mask is amazing. And obviously the title track is great. Temptation is really good. Blood Red is awesome. Just another great album. Thank you Slayer for making so many good albums. Next we have my only Slipknot CD, which is their self-titled. It's good. I like it a good amount. I think my favorite on here is Wait and Bleed, but I also do really, really like Surfacing. Surfacing is a really good one as well. Liberate is quite good. Scissors is all right. Eyeless I do enjoy a lot. There are just a lot of good ones on here. Um, moving back into Symphonic for a brief second, we have Sonata Arctica, my favorite, one of my favorite albums of all time. This is easily in, in my top 10 favorite albums ever. I, I love this thing. Ecliptica, 
so many good songs on here that I always go back to and listen to. Every single song on this album is a must listen to. It's not even that they're good, they are all great. There is not a single one I dislike. Blank File, My Land, Eighth Commandment, Replica, Kingdom of a Heart, Full Moon, Letter to Dana, Unopened, Picturing the Past and Destruction Preventer, and then Mary Lou at the end. And then there's another version of uh, Letter to Dana at the end as well. This is just an amazing album. Amazing album. If you love Symphonic, then you'll love this album. No doubt about it. This is, the, this is as good as it gets for me with Symphonic. This is amazing. No doubt. This is even bordering on like power metal as well. So if you're into power metal, also check this one out. Amazing album, start to finish. Next we have Sonata Arctica's 2019 album, which is also their latest album to date. We have, God, I'm not going to be able to pronounce that name, am I? Talvio. Talvio? Yeah, Tal Talvio. I haven't uttered the words of this album in a long time. I think it's Talvio. I think. Anyway, look at this album art. It's so cool. The tracks, on the other hand, uh, some of them are good. They're not all good, though. This is this is one that I expected that I'd like more than I actually do. Message from the Sun is good. Whirlwind is okay. I do love Cold. Storm the Armada I've come to enjoy. And then a little less understanding is good. And then besides that, maybe Demon's Cage is good. And the rest of it is kind of forgettable for me. Plus, it's they're deering out of the power metal and into the symphonic a bit more in this album. So if you're not into symphonic, then this album is a real turn off. But I do, so I still enjoy this album. But there are a few less notable songs in here than there were in there. Other album, Ecliptica. Anyway, right, now, moving on to Thrash briefly. And with that, moving into my favorite thrash metal band of all time at the moment. I think of all time. Yeah, I do love, I listen, I do love Overkill and Metallica, but Testament Man, they just hit different. They're, they've released so many good albums as well, you wouldn't believe it. And the fact that I've only got three of them, man, I need to pick up my game and buy more Testament CDs. There are so many good ones. Speaking of, I don't have the Legacy, otherwise you'd be seeing the Legacy right here. But we have The New Order, which is good enough for me. This is an amazing album, no doubt about it. I love this thing to pieces. This is an amazing sophomore album. The New Order, Trial by Fire, Into the Pit, Hypnosis, Disciples of the Watch. Oh my god, a good song. The Preacher is really good. Musical Death is really good. This is an amazing album. Amazing album. And Destament only get better. This is no, this isn't, this isn't, this is a good album. And yet it's not even in my top five Testament albums because there are so many good ones after this. Anyway, moving on to the next one. We have The Ritual, an amazing album. I, people say this one, they sell out in this one and they go a bit mainstream with this. I disagree. I, I like they went in a different direction with this one because it breaks up the monotony of listening to every album back to back, which is what I have done. Um, oh, this is upside down. Wait, no, it's not. Oh, they've done it in a weird way. I see. Anyway, right. Electric Crown happens to be one of my favorite Testament songs of all time. Season, the season, as, sorry, as, I'll say that again. As Seasons Grey, great, uh, a great song, really emotional. Deadline is really good. The Ritual is really good. Return to Serenity is amazing. So Many Lies is quite a good one. Um, another really, really good album here. Love this one. Um, and here we have my favorite Testament album of all time, The Dark Roots of Earth. Um, amazing. Uh, it's also Modern Testament. Uh, if you couldn't tell, Modern Testament is my favorite Testament, which is why I love their latest album and um, Formation of Damnation. I love all their newer albums a bit more. And this album is definitely my favorite though. Rise Up is amazing. Native Blood is amazing. True American Hate, Day in the Death, Man Kills Mankind. There are so many good tracks on here. I cannot tell you how much I love this thing. So many good songs. And the cover of Power Slave is godly on here. This is such a good album. I love this album. Dark Roots of Earth, definitely recommend if you learn to thrash. That's as good as it gets for me. I love it. Now we move on to Trivium. Now, I've got quite a few Trivium albums. One of the reasons why I've picked up in my collecting of Trivium albums a lot since the last time I updated my album collection is because I was <laughs> preparing myself for seeing Trivium live in November of 2021. But then COVID happened and they canceled that tour and they pushed it back, and hear this, to January, hold on, 2023. The tour was meant to be November 2021. They pushed it back a year and a quarter. Does anybody else see how much of an issue that is? Especially since I spent so much time revising on my Trivium leading up to the concert and yet, yeah, here I am with another year and a half to practice and lead up to it. But let's just go through my Trivium collection. So we have The Crusade, 
probably their most forgettable album, but I still thought it was okay. There were some good ones on here. Ignition is quite good. To the Rats is all right. Tread the Floods is all right. There are just some all right songs on here. I don't love it, but I don't hate it. It's all right. Then we have Ascendancy. Amazing album. This one is really, really good. Um, this one deserves a lot more love than it gets. Rain is really good. Declaration is really good. The End of Everything is really good. Dying in Your Arms is obviously a classic. Suffocating Sight is also really cool. There are just some really good ones on this album that I, I love. All right, next we have Shogun. Uh, this is another good album. Not amazing, but it's definitely good. Insurrection is really good. Down From The Sky is really good. The Calamity. Into The Mouth Of Hell We March is probably my favorite on this album. Shogun is obviously a good song as well. But then we move on to the bangers, okay? These next three Trivium albums are amazing and is easily the reason why I like Trivium is these next three that I'm about to show you. We have, first of all, In Waves. Amazing, for so many reasons. Let me go through the reasons for you right now. How about that? Capsizing the Sea, In Waves, Inception of the End, Black, Built to Fall, Forsake Not the Dream, Leaving This World Behind, Chaos Reigns. Those are your reasons, plus probably a few more on there that I didn't name, but there you go, a great album. Next, Vengeance Falls, stop falling, you stupid CDs. Vengeance Falls, here's some reasons why this album's good. Brave This Storm. Vengeance Falls, Strife, No Way to Heal, To Believe, End of This War, Through Blood, Dirt and Bones, Vill 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 <sighs> Even now I can't speak English. Villainy Thrives, and then these last two are a bit forgettable, but then there are a few good bonus tracks, like As I'm Exploding, which isn't on this regular CD, which is sad, but oh well. Good album, love this one, highly recommend. Especially if you're into metalcore. And then the last one for this collection, besides the one you see on top, which we all know what it is, because we can all see it. We have What the Dead Men Say, this was a gem, and the fact this came out at the start of lockdown in 2020, this album saved me from myself. This al I nearly went fucking insane during lockdown. This album was there to help me. This album is so good. There isn't a single bad one on here. This is easily my favorite Trivium album of the whole thing. I'll just list off every song because I love every song so much. What the Dead Men Say, Catastrophist, Among the Shadow and the Stones, Bleed Into Me, Defiant, Sickness Unto You, Scattering the Ashes, Bending the Ark to Fear, and the ones we leave behind. What a good album. It's so sad that the band didn't get to tour on this album because my god it would have been a good tour. But anyway, right, next and last but not least we have my only typo negative album. For now, I'm gonna get Origins of Feces, I'm gonna get Life is Killing Me, and hopefully I'm gonna get Dead Again as well. There are so many albums that I need from typo negative, but this will have to do for now. We have October Rust, as we can all see. A great album. I love this one. It's not even my favourite typo album, and yet I still worship it. Be My Druid, this is great. Love You To Death is awesome. Green Man is quite good. Cinnamon Girl cover is so good. I love that fucking song. Girlfriend's Girlfriend is really, really good. Bad Ground, Haunted. There are just so many good tracks on here. Great, great album. Great album. And with that, we have now completed it, boys and girls. We've now looked at every single metal album and CD that I own in my collection. There you go, this has been a journey, and this album, or this video, God my brain is fried, this video has been a journey, and it has been a mammoth, probably, for me to edit. Um, so, I guess that will close out this video for you guys. The only other things I, should, I think I might show you in this video are my very, very limited collection of uh, vinyls. So first we have Let There Be Rock, the ACDC vinyl second hand obviously but i own it and it's cool by the way these aren't all the vinyls that i own i still own a lot more than this but these are the only ones i have in my room so i thought i'd just show them to you real quick we have deep purple we have the deep purple singles with a's and b's oh wow i didn't know i had this then we have the killers this is a this is a really good i'm really glad i have this for some reason i've got into the galaxy volume 2 what's that doing in there what the fuck blow up your video acdc as well and then a very very recent edition which is the main reason why i'm even showing you my vinyls is because i have this the diamonds in the rough 2020 version on vinyl this is probably my favorite thing that i own I love this thing. Every single song on here is a banger. I've already raved about Diamonds in the Rough when I pulled out the CD earlier, but I'm gonna go through them again anyway. Demons I love, Crossroads is amazing, the cover of Flash of the Blade is really good, Until the End is amazing, Love Tension, Walk cover is quite good, The Fight is good, Dancing Dead is one of my favorite songs of all time, Set Me Free, 4AM, St. James, Lost It All, 
so many good songs on there and then Paranoid is a good cover as well I guess. So many good tracks on this album. I haven't dared open it from the shrink wrap yet though. This thing is sacred to me which is why I'm not going to keep it held up any longer because it's hurting my arm and I might drop it and that's the last thing I want to do. So that's it. That's it for my CD collection, my album collection for 2022. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and yeah with that said I'll, I guess I'll just see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.